Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning. My name is Thomas, and you're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. We're glad you could join us, but before we get into the Word, let's open up in prayer. Lord, just thank you for today. Just thank you for showing us what we need to do and just preserving us. Lord, I also just thank you for giving us the wisdom so we can do it correctly. In the name of Jesus, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. Glad to have you with us as we continue to study the Lord's house and the garments of the priesthood. Before we begin, though, I'd just like to ask that you would like, subscribe, and share this message on any number of our platforms and with everyone the Lord puts on your heart to share it with so they can be blessed. And also that you can be blessed by sharing in the, the work, the labor, and the blessing of this ministry as the gospel goes forth throughout the, the four corners of the earth. So, um, and, and just to be a blessing to us. It's wonderful to see that and to hear from people that have been blessed. So, um, anyway, enough, enough on that. Let's get to the word, shall we? And we are going to reread in Exodus 28, verses 31 through 43. So can I get a volunteer to cover that section of scripture, please? I will. All right, Layla. You shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue. There shall be an opening for his head in the middle of it. It shall have a woven binding all around its opening, like the opening in a coat of mail, so that it does not tear. And upon its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet all around its hem, and bells of gold between them all around. A golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe all around. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers, and its sound will be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, that he may not die. You shall also make a plate of pure gold, and engrave on it, like the engraving of a signet, holiness to the Lord. And you shall put it on a blue cord, that it may be on the turban. It shall be on the front of the turban. So it shall be on Aaron's forehead, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel hallow in all their holy gifts, and it shall always be on his forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. And you shall skillfully weave the tunic of fine linen thread. You shall make the turban of fine linen, and you shall make the sash of woven work. For Aaron's sons you shall make tunics, and you shall make sashes for them, and you shall make hats for them, for glory and beauty. So you shall put them on Aaron your brother, and on his sons with him. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister to me as priests. And you shall make for them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. They shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they come into the tabernacle of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place, that they do not incur iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever to him and his descendants after him. Hmm. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to open up the floor. I give each of you the opportunity to share what the Holy Spirit speaking and ministering to you and and also to ask any questions that you have. All right? Okay. So, who would like to begin? I will. <clears throat> All right, well, Charles. First thing I want to point out was verse 40 and 41. For Aaron's sons you shall make tunics and you shall make sashes for them and you shall make hats for them for glory and beauty. So you shall put them on Aaron your brother and on his sons with them. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them that they may minister to me as priests. Then I would like to go to First John. Wrong bookmark. First <laughs> uh, John two twelve through fourteen. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. 
I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. And what the Lord was showing me here was that this was also the, I'd say what we know is not the beginning of it. It's kind of like how Abraham and how Lord said he would know Abraham is going to teach his children. The Lord was showing here is that this is the exact same thing. He didn't wait for Aaron to die before he tried to teach it, before his children were taught in the way of how to become high priest and what they were supposed to be doing. But he gave them and ordered for them to start practicing and implementing now. It reminds me of how you and dad are always telling us, don't wait till you're an adult to try to think what you're assuming. Because like, my philosophy was, yeah, when I'm an adult, I'm going to hit it hard. I'm going to be working and I'm going to do it great. But if I don't start that now, it's not going to happen. Tell you it's what. not going to be when I suddenly have my first job, the lights are going to flick on and I'm going to be the best superhero flying around doing everything. Mm -hmm. That's not how it's going to work. And the Lord was showing me here was that we have to put a practice in how even... And what he also wanted me saying that also refers to how in our spiritual state we tend to think of ourselves as okay that's a bit too deep for ourselves or saying we're not quite at that level like people who are new to the faith they say okay i'm not quite there yet i need to go over these things mm. and how the lord showed me was was not to back off the things that we think we're not at or need at this point and try to progress Yes, there you have. There is a progression towards it, but don't try to stunt it or slow it down to fit what your mind thinks it can handle at the time. That's not how the Lord works. And I forget who I was just thinking of. I was just thinking of someone. Um, I think somewhere in the Bible it was they were, I'd say, pushed forward. Actually, Jeremiah. 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 Um, but he he's... wasn't quite the age which many people would thought. Okay, this is the time I can start speaking now. And this is the time that I have something to implement. If we're mm -hmm. going by worldly standards, I'm Amen. of age. And how the Lord, he wants us to progress further than what we think natural. He doesn't want us to be limited to, this is all I've known. This is what I know. I can't go any further than this. That's not what he wants. And that's what you see here and how the Lord's saying, okay, I want you to start doing this. But I also know that when to start doing what I have for you, you need to start early. Amen. I'm yeah. not going to wait till the last second and try to push you forward. It's not wait till the last second and hope it only takes a second, which it never does. It's mm. progress and start before when you um, don't need it. So when you do need it, you're already prepared for it. And it's just, okay, I'm just doing this again. I've already been doing this. So you're a master. So here's the, there's a couple things. <laughs> Your, the reborn spirit is perfect. Yes. It knows and it wants the things of God. The trouble comes in with the soul. Yes. The soul is the one where fleshly desires, uh, that's the place where those dwell, um, limitations and the inability to perceive the things of God and accept or receive them. That's the soul. That's why our soul salvation has to be worked out and our minds have to be renewed. Yes. Um, the Lord is the one who said, train up a child, a child in the way that they should go. So that as they yes. get older, they know what they're supposed to be doing. Right. And that was that was me paraphrasing that um, verse. But <clears throat> parenting is God's idea. And the, the most perfect way of doing it only comes from him. So it's natural that he exercises that imperfection yes. in a perfect way is what I mean. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Also. Consider. That as as and while the Lord made a place for. Levi's sons to have a place before the him, they still had to accept it. They still had to yes. treat it righteously because they, because of who they were, they weren't allowed to profane the things of God and go, well, my name is such and such. Don't you know who my daddy is? And, and trample underfoot the things that God said is holy. They weren't able to just run into the holies of holies or et cetera, et cetera. They still had to come through the door, which is the way God set up and structured for things to happen. So while you have a call and a destiny, you have a, a big part to play in whether or not you will actually fulfill that destiny and get to walk in it. So God has done everything that he is and, wah, out the womb before you're you saying, were in the womb. You're saying it's not automatic, honey, honey? No. I, it, yes, wow. that's exactly what I'm saying. 
God did all that he did. He rolled out the red carpet, had little garments made mm-hmm. for them, told them how to wear it, et cetera, et cetera, and to glorify them and beautify them and give them a place to stand in his presence and a job to do. But, and yet they still had to come the appropriate way. Amen. Do you think yes. if, if um, Elazar and his brother dashed in there without their, sh- their undergarments on, they would have had a different outcome than anybody else? <laughs> No, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> they said, that's all right, Jesus. You're you going to take me how I am. Uh, you, you mean like with, with Uzziah, right? Uh, couldn't just touch the, the Ark of the Covenant to hold it up, right? It, was, it wasn't different for him. Well-meaning and all. No, God is who he is. Respect his way. Respect the door. It's the adversary who disdains the things of God. Correct? Yes. Okay, so we are partakers of light. We are partakers of the kingdom and... While the natural man, as we talked about, the soul man may have a hard time understanding why things are the way they are with God or understanding the depth of what's available to us in Christ, the spirit man knows. And as we reign in our bodies and we make proper um, establishment, so before we come to Christ, we're used to being led by our soul. That's our mind, our will, and our emotions fleshly desires, environmental experience, et cetera, et cetera. That's what governs us. But when we come into Christ, our spirit now should be the driver, right? Because our spirit, our reborn spirit is just like God wants it to be. It's perfect and it is connected and communing with the Holy Spirit. So God, just like he is, we are supposed to be acting and operating. So that takes time and I won't even say time. It's not a time factor. It's an effort factor. Yes. <clears throat> it's coming to the knowledge of Christ. It's rightly applying the word that we receive. Walk in the light that you have. You may only know to do two things. We'll do those two things diligently. Be consistent with it. And then ask God to show you if there's anything else you're missing. And to add to you, to perfect you, to make you what he wants you to be. And then keep walking with him. And then continue to grow. There are people um, in, that have been in Christ for a decade or five decades. And as uh, a dear pastor would say, you have to push the bottle past the mustache. They've got a full grown manly mustache and you still got to feed them with a bottle. Think about it. Well, push then, the mustache then, out of the way and give them the bottle. Didn't Paul say that, right? You, you By should. this time, you should now be teachers. Mm-hmm. But we're still giving, I was paraphrased, right? He was still feeding them the milk of the word. like Because they couldn't the handle infants. meat. Right? Right. They right. couldn't handle meat. But Charles, that's, that's what you started with, right? In First John <laughs> is the four, I'll say, stages of maturity. Yes. <clears throat> infants, little children, adolescents, and then fathers. Not discounting mothers, right? But, but parents, Ones that should know better, do know better, and, and you're not just doing, but now teaching and instructing others yes. on how they should live for the Lord, right? Teaching them how to separate the holy from the profane, the things that matter and are, uh, will be a blessing and benefit their lives versus the things that are detrimental, that only seek to kill and destroy and steal from them or steal, kill, and destroy from them and their lives. Amen. So it's certainly not a length of time that causes you to grow. Yes. It is a willingness, it's diligent effort to hear from the Lord and to apply and to do, right? Not just hearers of the word, because if you just hear and you just go away and do nothing, you're like a person who doesn't even remember what you look like in the mirror. And that is not something to be prized or praised. But doers of the words are the ones that have understanding. So we all have to come that route. Mm -hmm. We all have to come through the door. God said, this is the way that we must go. And who are we to challenge him on it and say, that's too hard for us. Mm -hmm. Now you can ask for help, but not say you shouldn't ask this of me, God. No. Teach me how to to see what you see, Lord. And I'll walk with you and I'll trust you, right? Nathan said, if I go to David and I say what you just told me, he's going to kill me. And God said, okay, do that approach like this. He didn't ask us to 
be empty of understanding and foolish, but he did ask us to trust and be willing to hear and walk with him. Trust that he has our best interest at heart, right? Jeremiah said, yes. Lord, they're going to put me, they're hurting me, right? And he yes. cried and they threw him in a pit and he said, Lord, save me. And then he rejoiced because the Lord did deliver him. Mm-hmm. What else? <coughs> okay. <laughs> and then. I can hear the motor running. So. And please share, brother. And you were saying, Mommy, about time. And it just immediately reminded me of how the Lord was saying that he is not limited by time. Amen. There's no time for him. He created time. It is his servant. And it is our servant as well. Yes. Mm. That brought, that was what led me to Joshua 10. About how Joshua asked that the sun stood still. Amen to he that. he asked for time to stop. <clears throat> and the Lord was showing me here was that with it, it's like you are saying, Mommy, with oh, the willingness, you have you? to have a willingness, I'd say, to see the supernatural <laughs> growth. Um, and it just reminds me of how I wanted to be taller. Originally, I thought I was for a while I was really short uh-huh. and how I said Lord I want to be taller and then mm-hmm. I but I had to be willing to put forth the effort in order to making myself taller doing the things that he told me to say okay this is going to make you taller the same is true here we can't expect to <laughs> I'd say mature and come up if we like you're saying while we're always sucking off a bottle you can never expect to be able to chew anything it's like chewing soft foods and trying to eat something hard it hurts your teeth the same okay. is true the same is true here. We have to progress and go forward and saying, okay, Lord, I understand what you want me to do. Lord, help me go to this and do it because right now I do not have the strength. And that's also a humility aspect. If I had to try to say, no, Lord, I got this. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work. Mm-hmm. So it's also first being humble and then going with the process. And then <laughs> Mom, when you're talking about Aaron's sons, um, this led me to a slightly different thought and how I forget which devotional we were doing, but I was just thinking about how the Lord gave clear warnings here inside these. He was saying, do this so you do not incur iniquity on yourself. Amen. This is what I told you to do. And it just reminded me of Aaron's first two sons. They decided to run there all willy nilly with their incense and they got consumed by fire. It wasn't because the Lord was malicious or wanted to kill them. It was because the Lord had to maintain his holiness we can't expect to profane the Lord and say, okay, Lord, you just deal with it because I'm your child. Nope, that's not how it works. So we have to come, first of all, we had to come as children, first of all, respectful. Like, <laughs> hey, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> Put that on there again. <laughs> you realize that you just spoke something that was recorded now yes. so it can be used against you in the future. <laughs> No matter if I It's a good thing we don't do that. The statute is what it is. Good thing we don't do that here. Ignorance is no excuse. Yeah, yeah, just having fun. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, but let's let's add to what what you're saying there, sir, right? Yeah. What was the band, the gold band that went on the turban? What did it say? Holiness to the Lord. Holiness to the Lord. Hmm. Okay. Uh if you if you will go to Zechariah 14. It talks about the character in the kingdom, right? Of course, this is this is a prophetic thing in Revelation after judgment, after all these things, right? Um, after judgment's given on all the disobedient um, nations, right? But verses twenty and twenty-one, it says, "In that day, holiness to the Lord." shall be engraved on the bells of the horses. The pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. Everyone who sacrifices shall come and take them and cook in them. And that day there shall no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So, Yes, you can look at that in the natural sense of, well, these are just bowls and pots, right? Yes. But we are what? The Lord said there are two types of vessels. Vessels for 
Honor and dishonor. Honor and dishonor, right? Yes. We should be vessels of honor because we are dedicated to the Lord's service. Mm -hmm. If he is in fact our God and we are in fact his people. If mm -hmm. that is true, and for those that are that actually claim to be believers, claim to be Christians, followers of Christ, he should be our God and we should be his people. And in that, it says every pot, well, we're vessels. We should be vessels of honor. Every pot shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. It's one standard for everybody. Amen. It's written on the bells at every aspect, right? Which when we go into talking about the breastplate, talking about restoration to the heavenly community, community, everyone, everything in it is dedicated to the Lord and his service. Amen. There's nothing that defiles. Nothing. Or causes a lie or sin entering again anymore, ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I, I hope we can talk about this, but it's, I find this, there's, there's a span happening here when it comes to um, the undergarments. In the garden, they were naked before the Lord and oh, unashamed. We were talking about this in the, in the previous one. Oh, did but I miss that? You Aww. did, yes. Okay. But you can repeat right. it. It's okay. No, it's okay. But yes, how the Lord is our covering. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's, that was the whole point and purpose of this, right? We <coughs> carry iniquity, right? We are born into sin and iniquity mm -hmm. because of the curse. However, the Lord, which is represented in each, all of these garments, is our covering. The Father sees his Son covering us. Amen. Now, when we go to the New Testament, it says all things are naked. And opened unto Sorry. the Lord. We talked about that. Yep. Mm -hmm. well, go ahead, Layla. I see your finger wagging over there. But what that was talking about was our spiritual being. That's laid before him. He did not say walk in there with no clothes on as a dirt sack. But the essence of our being, the things that make us, make, make us, you know, who we are, our spiritual man is what he sees. So he can see past... The dirt sack and he sees past our facades and the excuses that we try to give him to see the truth and to see who we are and in the in the same manner he wants us to um be sanctified and cleansed so that we can see him the same way he sees us after the spirit um Paul says, um, we see in a mirror dimly in mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians, but then face to face. So that means we see past what is represented in the natural world, mm -hmm. the flesh, the flesh, and we see the person for who they truly are, just as Christ sees us that way. Amen. Amen. Now, Charles, did you have something you wanted to say? Promise can go. Oh, thank you, Le Charles. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Promise. Okay, first Lord is pointing out um, what Dad said the color what of uh, blue meant high priestliness, and so the Lord remind me of how the blue garment was solid blue. There's no different colors in it, mm -hmm. and so the Lord remind me of that's how Jesus was when he was on Earth. Mm -hmm. Everything he did reflected what the Father said, mm -hmm. and when I say everything, I mean everything. Amen. I mean, from since he was a baby onward. Everything he did reflected what the father said. Yes. He had no sin. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That was it. Okay. He did not have sin nature, a part of him, like we do. He was born, right? Yes. God is his father versus a natural man being his father, literally. Correct? Yes. Okay. Amen. Wait, is then also I wanted to comment on something that Charles said previously. Okay. And how the, the Lord didn't go. There's a different standard for Aaron's sons, the ones that got consumed. And so the Lord showed me that because he didn't... Wait. Yeah. Because he didn't have two different standards for two... If someone else had come in and done the same thing... 
because of the fact that they're not supposed to be in there, they still have gotten the same punishment. Not punishment. They will still have gotten the same result. Mm. Because the Lord's the same across the board. And again with the... You, not you form Solid garment. Amen. It's okay. When we think about this, I, I want to I put this in our perspective. There's two sides to what we're talking about here. So one side is God said, this is my standard, right? And he says, I'll have mercy on whom I'll have mercy, right? Because he's judging not by the outward appearance, but by the inward. He's judging by his standard, right? Which there's one standard, but he sees the heart. Now, the human doesn't have the liberty to go, well, I think I can cross this line, God. Do you see the sides of it? God could say, you did something, but not hold you, not charge you with it because he, whatever metric he's, he's, as he's looking at it, because he's got one metric and he knows what it is, but he may offer mercy to one <laughs> because he sees the heart. We're all humans on the outside. So we don't have the right to go, God, you're going to show me mercy on this and snatch it off of him and take it away from him and point in his face and declare we're going to violate him and he's just going to deal with it as the human towards God. Now, God and his mercy that he has for generations can show mercy to, right? Should he choose to? He's not required to, but should he choose to because he is a good God, he's able to do that. Just like if you have a ball and you take that ball and you want to bounce it and you bounce it to your brother. That was your choice. You bounced it to your brother, right? But if Layla came and snatched your ball out of your hand, and then pointed at you and said, you're going to give me this ball. You're like, uh, no, that's my ball. <laughs> you, you don't have the right to do that. Do you understand? Yes. Do you see the difference? Yes. God is not a man. He's not a human being. And we don't have the right to extract anything from him and tell him what he's going to do and violate his sovereignty, his holiness. We must respect that. And we must take the pathway that he gave us, that he told us this is the standard. And for you, he may son, the standard is obedience, but he may tell you for your life, I need you, you're going to wear this blue shirt and you're going to wear blue until I tell you not to. Your obedience says, yes, sir. And he may say to Mr. Dean, you're going to wear a gray shirt. And Every other day, I want you to change to a red shirt. Mr. Dean's obedience is to say, yes, sir. And if you said, Mr. Dean, don't you wear a blue shirt? I said, wear gray and red. That's what I expect from you. Mr. Dean, should he put his hand on a blue shirt? No. Should he slide it over his head and poke his arms out through the holes? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't recommend it. And it seems like such a simple thing to us because we're looking from a human perspective, which is full of the sin nature and guided by the flesh. But God said what he said for a reason. So if God said, don't you touch a blue shirt, then don't pick it up. Don't even handle it. And if he tells you to give it to a neighbor, that's one thing. But handling it from yourself and going, well, this would look great on me today, but my eyes and blinking in the mirror, don't do it. Don't put it over your head and don't slide your arms out through the holes because he told you he said what he said. But both fall under the standard of obedience, but in that he gave you unique assignments. Which is why we are not the judge. Got you, babe. Which is why we respect the holiness of God and come through the door in the pathway that he told us. Did you have something, Dean? Sure. Okay. So, no, he didn't tell you, you had to wear a blue shirt, but whatever he says to you, that's what you abide by. He's written in his word. He speaks through us through the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, LeCharles. You got something real quick? It's not quick. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then let's pause there for today. Okay. And we can pick this up on the next episode. All right. Yes. So who would like to close out in prayer? I will. All right, Charles. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. First of all, Lord, we just thank you for your word, for your word, Lord, and that we have a continual mirror in which we can look into, Lord, and refute 
review what you are saying to us, Lord, and consider exactly what we need to get in line, Lord, and what we need to change and give over to you, Lord. Lord, we also just thank you for a natural and physical relationship with you, Lord, that you speak to us directly, Lord, that you speak to us both through your word and face to face like with Moses, Lord, that we are your friend, Lord, and that you can trust us with everything that you have for us, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that he guides us away from trouble and into your perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to a Day of Prayers morning Bible study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through a day of prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.